Image blending is amazing. It allows us to seamlessly insert objects into images. Hey Apple! What? Knife? Huh? Ah! Oh! Oh, I, I warned you! Ow! We can blend image contents across multiple scales for extreme zooms, across multiple viewpoints for making a seamless panorama, and across multiple exposure levels for creating a high-quality image efficiently without converting to a HDR first. How do we achieve this? In this video, we will introduce a simple yet powerful idea for image blending. Let's illustrate the problem with a simple example. Suppose we want to blend two images into one. A straightforward approach is to use a simple weighting function, W1 and W2, to combine them. In this case, we take the left side of image 1 and the right side of image 2. But this does not look great. The transition is too harsh. Let's soften the blending function. This creates a smoother transition from image 1 to image 2. We can make the transition smoother by adjusting the weighting function. But now we see more ghosting artifacts. It's unclear how we can choose an optimal window. The core idea is to adaptively blend the contents based on their frequency. Low frequency components like smooth areas should transition gradually. High frequency components such as sharp edges and textures should blend quickly to avoid ghosting. But how do we do that? First, we construct a multi-scale representation of the image. We do this by repeatedly blurring and downsampling the image. The result is a Gaussian pyramid. The highest level contains all the high-frequency details. As we move down, each level contains progressively lower frequencies. To blend images at different frequencies, we need a representation that captures different frequency ranges. To do so, we compute the residual image. The difference between an image at one level and its upsample version from the next level. This image L0 captures the high frequency details present in G0 but not in G1. Similarly, we compute L1 as the difference between the image G1 and the upsample G2. This captures the high frequency details present in G1 but not in G2. Following the same process, this forms the Laplacian pyramid. From the frequency domain, we see that the images at different levels represent different frequency ranges. The final layer stores a lower resolution image that contains the lowest frequency content. Interestingly, this is the same as the final layer of a Gaussian pyramid. With the Laplacian pyramid, we can perfectly reconstruct the original high resolution image. We start with the lowest resolution image, upsample it, and add a residual image from the Laplacian pyramid. We then move on to the next level, upsample the image, and then add back the residual. By the final step, we have restored all the frequency details across multiple levels, reconstructing the original input image perfectly. Now that we can decompose an image into different frequency ranges, how do we use them for blending? We start by constructing a Gaussian pyramid for each input image. Next, we compute the residuals at each level, forming Laplacian pyramids for both images. Then we prepare the weight images at multiple levels. This ensures that we blend the high-frequency contents quickly and the low-frequency contents slowly. After blending these frequency contents at all levels, we have a blended Laplacian pyramid. We can then reconstruct an image with all the frequency details from the blended pyramid. This is called Laplacian pyramid blending. Compared to simple feather blending, Laplacian pyramid blending produces a seamless, high-quality composite image. From this simple image blending example, we see that we can combine and blend regions from different images into a coherent one. But the blending weight is very simple. Here, I want to showcase another application of Laplacian pyramid blending with more complex blending weights. The problem we are interested in is high dynamic range image reconstruction. The digital camera we have has a very limited dynamic range compared to our eyes. They can only capture a narrow range of brightness levels in the scene. As a result, when we properly expose the sky regions, all the foreground subjects are too dark and lack details. Let's increase the exposure level. 
Now the buildings look better, but the foreground subject is still not clear. Increasing the exposure level further brings out all the nice details of the subject. But now the sky regions are overexposed and completely washed out. Convention method focuses on reconstructing the high dynamic range image and then remap the HDR image onto the low dynamic range display using tone mapping. With Laplacian Pyramid, we can simplify the process and fuse the images efficiently without converting to HDR first. For each image, we design a weight map that measures pixel quality like intensity, saturation, and contrast. We can then use these weight maps and blend all the images into one using Laplacian Pyramid branding. The blended image contains all the details in different regions. This is called exposure fusion. It highlights the wide applicability of Laplacian Pyramid branding. Great, let's see how we can implement this in Python. Here is a high-level function. We start with constructing the Gaussian Pyramid for image 1 and image 2. Using the Gaussian Pyramid, we can generate the Laplacian Pyramid. We blend the two Laplacian Pyramids and reconstruct it back to the high-resolution image. Let's take a closer look at how each function is implemented. For the Gaussian Pyramid, it's very simple. We start with the original image and blur and downsample the image iteratively to get the image at the next level. The resulting Gaussian Pyramid is a list of images with progressively smaller resolutions. To construct a Laplacian Pyramid, we start with a Gaussian Pyramid as input. We upsample the low resolution image in the next level of a Gaussian Pyramid and compute the residual image. This residual image captures the high frequency details that are present in the current level but not in the next level. For the last level of a Laplacian Pyramid, we set it as the image with the lowest resolution in the Gaussian Pyramid. Now we have the Laplacian Pyramids for the two images, we can blend them together. Here, for each level, we perform a simple linear combination of the two images according to the mask. This gives us a blended Laplacian Pyramid. As a final step, we can reconstruct the high-resolution image from the blended Laplacian Pyramid. We start with the last level of the Laplacian Pyramid. This image has the lowest special resolution. We then work our way up one level at a time. For each level, we upsample the lower resolution image to the size of the current level and add the details back. With this process, we can just reconstruct the high-resolution blended image. Let's zoom out and review the high-level implementation. It's a simple yet effective image blending method that has applications everywhere. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.